I want to thank everybody for being here, and uh, I want to thank the uh, organizers for inviting me to speak at this water and engineering <coughs> conference. My name is Joe Jenkins, and I want to inform you that there are two subjects that I'm probably not going to say much about. One is water and one is engineering. So I hope you can bear with me. My uh, topic is compost sanitation, and thankfully the uh, <coughs> other two people didn't show up. It gives me a little bit more time. Usually when I speak on this subject, <coughs> I speak for an hour and a half. And for me to squeeze it down to 15 minutes is do yeah, we're tied up, you see, in the introduction. But I will uh, try to be expedient just in case the other folks show up and that may have it. Uh, my topic was compost sanitation. I thought I'd be the only presenter with a two-word title. The actual title would be public sanitation using hot composting. Um, The, uh, the issue, the water issue here, is that uh, <coughs> waterborne sanitation systems are expensive, create pollution, and waste. Now, a lot of what I've been hearing in this conference so far is, what do we do with polluted water? How do we get nitrates out? How do we get this out? How do we clean it up? Uh, I don't know if anybody ever heard of the book uh, we all live downstream, but I think it's Sarah Steindraper. She had a, a little story in that book. People lived in a village on a riverbank. And they would see a dead body floating down the river. And they'd, they'd swim out, they'd pull the body in, and they'd bury it. And the next day, another dead body. They'd swim out, pull it in, and they'd bury it. And this kept going on until somebody finally said, why don't we go upstream? and find out what's killing these people and stop them. So this is what I'm saying here. Uh, rather than just deal with the symptoms, why don't we go to the source? The symptoms of water pollution is what we're dealing with when we're cleaning the water, we're cleaning the water. Let's find out how we can keep that pollution out of our water. <coughs> Polluted water, <coughs> very common. Diarrhea of deaths, a lot of children die from diarrhea, fecal pathogens, contaminated water, this is the World Health Organization statement. Fecal pathogens contaminate water through sewage systems, flush toilets, and latrines. By 2015, 2.7 billion people without any sanitation. Any sanitation means open defecation, which uh, is prevalent in a lot of places in the world. People don't have any type of toilet. They simply go outside on the ground. People who do have toilets often use pit latrines. Pit latrine is a source of groundwater pollution. So now you have polluted water and we're dealing with polluted water again. How do we prevent that from happening? And by the way, all the flush toilets we have in the United States uh, pollute water as well. And these beaches, beach closings, uh, lakes and streams that we can't swim in come from polluted water. A lot of that pollution comes from our sewage systems. It comes from other sources as well. <coughs> we need to figure out how to create sanitation systems that don't pollute water or soil for that matter. Because uh, human excretions do both. They, they pollute both water and soil. Composting is an alternative, and that's what I'm here to talk about. I did some work in Mongolia uh, in 2006, and I, I do a lot of work with engineers, which is why I'm a member of the American Society of Civil Engineers. The, the engineers I've worked with in Mongolia 
knew nothing, nothing about this conquest, or nothing at all. It was a revelation to see that there is an alternative to waterborne waste disposal. Compost is not based on water, does not create waste, and it's not a disposal system. It's a recycling system. This is one of the hardest concepts for educated people to understand. When I say you can have a sanitation system that does not dispose of waste, there's no waste, there's no disposal. For some reason, that just doesn't register, goes right over the top. Whereas uneducated people, when you tell them this, they understand. This is a dilemma in, in education, education for me. Now this is the crux of...